Hello and welcome to Careers Talks Live with Max from the Young Project at Trent Bridge Community Trust. And this is episode five about events. And we are here today with Janina. So do you want to just say hi, Janina? Oh, hi, I'm Janina Monaghan. And um, yeah, thanks for inviting me on today, Max. Happy to share my journey with the next generation. Absolute pleasure to have you on, and and I think it's uh it should be an interesting one because uh, events is a uh, such a unique and, and diverse career pathway. Uh, so so I guess we'll kind of start off with the first question, which is, what is your job title? What does your role entail? Um, just mm -hmm. tell us a, a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. So um, my job title is freelance event professional, and essentially that means that I'm self-employed um, so I'm hired by companies agencies within the world of events um, I'm hired for specific projects to to help their clients um, and this all happens within the live event sector and in particular a sector called MICE which is, stands for meetings, incentives, conferences, and exhibitions. Thank you very much. That, I think that's a, that's a very good overview of kind of what you kind of get up to and, and how your role is. Um, just, I want to ask for a bit of interaction. Um, for the guys who are kind of in the chat, uh, are you kind of, do you think that you're interested in, in running any kind of events in the future or do you think you're interested in hospitality as a career um and, and kind of what, what is your interest in that and uh while you're kind of typing that into the chat i will ask janina like a bit about your journey like in terms of how did you get to where you are today what what sort of route did you take in to get to where you are yeah well it's interesting because um i gave a talk in uh, at SNA um, before COVID struck and um, I kind of posed the question out to about 200 people to say you know put your hand up if you know what you want to do when you leave education and less than half the people put their hand up and so I, I, I just I kind of I want to off the back of that question I just want to emphasize that that's okay it's absolutely okay to not know what you want to do when you leave education mm -hmm. because that's exactly how I felt. Um, I, I went to sixth form college. I didn't, do, I didn't do very well. I got one A-level in German. Um, uh, but I was determined to go to university. So I, um, I literally pleaded with the course leader actually to, to let me on a, an HND course, High National Diploma. And because um, that, that, was, that was all I had, um, or that was all that was available to me with this 1A level. So I jumped onto that course and, um, and eventually I, I topped up and graduated and did the BA in, in International Business Studies. But, you know, even after leaving university, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I then moved to Nottingham, my, my um, boyfriend, uh, who's now my husband, um, decided he didn't want a, a career in the corporate world, so he joined the fire brigade. And um, yeah, I did a bit of temping for a, in a marketing uh, department for a ball bearing company, which, yeah, that wasn't... That is interesting. That was ball bearing incredible. company. It, 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 it wasn't for me. Let's just say it wasn't for me. So I was looking at alternatives and literally there was a small ad in the local newspaper for a burgeoning uh, event management company. And I answered it and got the job as a, as a project executive for the, for the company. So I, I fell into events because it was a... a it was an, an industry that I was just not familiar with. I had absolutely mm. no idea that it even existed. So, um, yeah, that, that's, how I, that's how I got into it. Yeah, and I, I think, as you said, like, there's, uh, there's been so many steps in your journey to get to actually find what you wanted to do. And mm. I think even more than ever, like, so many young people don't know what they want to do eventually. No. And 
and as you said, I think that's such an important message because there's more and more pressure for, for people to perform and to, uh, to have an idea and to find the right pathway for them. But like, really, you can kind of do it as you go along. I think maybe even if you have no idea at all, if you kind of, as you say, if you pursue the, the things that you enjoy, eventually yeah. you'll find what it is that you're interested in. Hopefully we'll be able to turn that into, into a job. Right. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And um, so we've kind of covered um, this next question already, but I'll ask in case you've any, we've kind of missed anything. What, um, what qualifications do, do you have? You said that you've got a degree. Um... Yeah, so I've got GCSEs and then a, a, an A-level, an HND and, and a degree. Cool. And then have, have you kind of got anything else since then? No, no I, I, haven't, I haven't done any sort of uh, additional types of qualification. Um, I got like a little bit of something from night school, another GCSE in Spanish. Um, nothing aid to sort of aid my career because I think a uh, career in the events industry is quite different. You don't really need um, a whole load of letters after your name. You know, mm -hmm. it's really fundamentally about having experience. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, absolutely. Events are difficult. Um... A diff is, is difficult because there's so many skills involved so yeah. I know this isn't a question that I've kind of uh, asked but I mean what what do you think are the kind of key skills to be in events? Well so it depends what sort of an area of events you want to go into like there are lots of different sectors weddings festivals corporate agency um, venues you can kind of you know you can be more specific in in terms of the, the type that you're more interested in but um ultimately like i just said it is about the experience um and i think having a passion and having energy and having the ability to problem solve having the ability to think differently be creative in your approach um resilience did I mention that that is a really important mm. um I think that can only be sort of built up through experience um so it's really uh, soft skills I would say it's more about a personality mm. um and determination but as well I think it's it's the ability to interact with people because it's such mm -hmm. a people industry yeah, definitely, definitely. Because you've got to work in, in teams as well. I, yeah. mean, I mean, you could try putting on a solo event, but I think you'd struggle. You would really <laughs> struggle. It absolutely is about teamwork. The ability to listen to others, the ability to take other people's ideas on board, to be accepting, to be curious, um, to, yeah, to kind of probe a little bit to challenge you know it you could go on it's it, you need to have all these different assets really and it for, for it all come together and that's where you will thrive if you're able to work as a team work independently you've got to be able to crack on haven't you with your mm. own work you've got to be able to be self-motivated as well um yeah teamwork's a big a big one absolutely and um, do you have any particular like advice or tips that might help people to get into what you're doing now? Yeah, well, so I would say if you were interested in a career in events, you know, reach out to people. I'm, 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 I'm happy to, um, re to to communicate with anybody after the session if they, if they want to have a you know one to one chat. Um, but I think generally if you can get involved with community events um that's a great thing or particularly within the hospitality sector if you can get part-time work as a waitress or a waiter or if you work in a bar anything that enables you to come into contact with people and to be part of a service industry because if you can 
if you can hold a conversation and you can deliver something with a smile, like as cliche as it sounds, you'll, you know, it, it will set you up. So yeah, those, those kind of areas, I would say, are where you should start. Yeah, I mean, there's also like a lot of different voluntary opportunities as well, isn't there, within events and stuff, because the thing is with events is that depending on what it is, they tend to be kind of seasonal or like one-offs. So it's, you could just get like a bit of experience in, in one particular event. And then yeah. you've got that, even if you're not getting paid for that one, you might get the experience, which would then get you onto something paid. And Yeah, you can if you can afford it and then volunteering route is a great route to go down um you know or even contacting companies and saying hey you know can uh, i'm looking for some work experience even if it's just a couple of weeks um yeah i think you know having a level of confidence you need to and that's 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 a tricky thing in itself isn't it mm. having, having that confidence but yeah um volunteering is is a good route yeah and then you because you can go from like kind of assisting in the delivery to kind of the planning beforehand mm. so you, uh -huh. you kind of go through the whole cycle if you if you wanted to obviously yeah. if you just wanted a little bit of experience and you can you could kind of go that route but yeah. um so uh, kind of would you recommend like the route that you did take or would like i don't know well so i don't I personally don't think there is a set route to take. I mean, mine was a, you know, mine was my personal journey involved a lot of chance encounters rather than a plan. Mm -hmm. um, so much of it is about mindset. And like we just mentioned about um, having a passion, you're resilient to creativity. Some people enter the world of events much later in life, which is fine. They've done something, they've had a career in something else and they've decided to flip, okay. The people will go to university and do an events management degree. I would say, regardless of uh, which point you come into the industry and regardless of the type of qualification that you have, you will always start at the bottom of mm. the ranks. You're not going to be going in at a higher level because people need to be able to establish a level of trust in you. They need to they need to see you in action. They need to hmm. see that you've got what it takes to be able to communicate with a client, communicate with suppliers, to think on your feet, you know, it's fast paced. Um, and to kind of problem solve because, <laughs> you know, when you're delivering events on site, Lord knows there are many curveballs that get yes. thrown at you. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. So like, what was, um, what would you say was like your way of kind of building up the trust and stuff for the people that you do events with? Well, so, I mean, I know it sounds a little bit cliche, but I think what kind of what's helped me to get where I am today is I think almost like an attitude, um, like I said, it's not so much about the qualifications. It's, I would even say, you know, just a smile, just mm. being able to engage with people. Um, and a smile goes a long way, making people happy, whether that's a client, a colleague, a supplier, your boss, you know, a smile costs nothing. And whilst I'm not saying you can get by in life on a smile alone, um, <laughs> It does help to project a really positive and sort of amiable attitude and it has an effect on people and it can really break down barriers and it can help in situations of conflict. So if you're on site and you're having to deal with a situation whilst you're delivering an event, if you can keep your head, keep your car, keep your cool and um, so kind of smile your way through I mean obviously dependent upon the situation <laughs> yeah but if you can just keep a, a, a positive attitude throughout then that for me has 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 really helped I mean there's so many you know situations I can give you an example actually um mm -hmm. so my first overseas event was for Rolls-Royce um and it was in Dubai and I was 
Um, I was asked to stand, I was asked to be a human signpost and direct the delegates to breakfast. So I was doing that and it was so hot and humid, but, you know, I was there in my sort of uniform. And, um, and a lady approached me and asked me, she said, oh, I'm not part of, I'm not part of your group. She said, cause she was looking at my badge and what have you. And she said, but I'm a bit lost. I don't, I don't know where I'm meant to be. I just need to be at the regular, I've been for a walk and now I don't know where I am. Cause the hotel was enormous in lots of, lots of ground. Hmm. And, um, I don't know where I'm meant to be. And so I said, all right, okay. I think, you know, you're meant to be in the hotel restaurant if you're just part of the regular um, guest. So I kind of walked with her, part, a bit like in the supermarket when you're, when you're asking somebody where the mm. coconut is or whatever, and mm. they try and guide you there. Mm. Um, and so I sort of did that, had a little bit of a chat with her along the way. And about three weeks later, she contacted my agency and mentioned how my my interaction with her and um and gave the agency a brief and said we'd like you to pitch for some work and um help us to develop a campaign she worked for mercedes and wow. um off the back of that we we got some work but that was partly i believe through my willingness to be helpful and to help you know so that's what i mean by kind of Showing a bit of kindness. And having a good attitude as well. Yeah. As you said earlier, yeah. Um, and I, I'm going to kind of bring the guys in here who are in the chat. Have you, like, what sort of events have you been to before? Have you been to any, like, large-scale events? And have you kind of experienced anything like this, something similar where you've had really positive experiences with event workers? Because it might be that you've not really thought about it before, but maybe they've done something nice for you or you've you've kind of seen you because you the thing is when you work on events and stuff like you are always thinking on your feet and you're under so much pressure mm. and so like you're kind of as you say you're throwing so many curveballs mm. you might not have even realized if you had that interaction and if you were kind of speaking to someone and you asked you know like oh where where is this they might have helped you but you don't kind of know what else is going on they might have had 10 customers crying to them about one thing or another um so so yeah my question to the guys in the chat is is more have you ever kind of experienced anything like that if you've been to events uh or if not like that might be something to consider that you um that you might not have thought about before and then while they're answering that um what would you say, Janina, was the biggest factor that's kind of helped you in your career journey so far? Um, did we just answer that one, Max? Uh, oh, uh, I don't think so, did we? The biggest factor that's helped you? Yeah, so I was sort of saying, really, it's more about, you know, the outlook, the attitude, mm -hmm. the personality, yeah. Okay. The willingness, willingness to help, Yeah. Cool. So then on the other foot, what's, what's like the, your biggest yeah. obstacle? Um, obstacle. Yeah, so I'd say it's interesting because actually I, I don't feel as though I've had huge obstacles in my past because I've never, I've never had this, you know, specific planned route where I've said, oh, by the age of 30, I need to become a director or, you know, so I've never had anything um, like that in my way that I need to overcome. However, what I have had are um, kind of career, career breaks. So I've had two lots of maternity leave where I've been out of the industry and then I've had to bring myself back in mm. and I've had two, two rounds of redundancies. Wow. So, you know, having to overcome those situations is really difficult, um, particularly the redundancy side. Um, but I would say the biggest obstacle is often yourself, you know? So it's learning about yourself and learning what your strengths are, what your values are, what you stand for, and how you're going to overcome that. Um, so the ability to kind of adapt and flex to new situations is really important. Um, and I would say, you know, a lesson out of all of that would be, don't be afraid to make mistakes, don't be afraid to fail. As, as long as you can learn from that, you can pick yourself up. And that's where the resilience comes in. You've got to 
um, you've got to recognise that it's all it's all important lessons in in your life's journey. Yeah, absolutely. And we've got someone in, in the chat says, um, "I've been to some large sporting events where staff have been helpful, and it sticks in your mind." And I, I think that, that's absolutely right because yeah, nice. Yeah. I mean, we, we have a tendency to remember the bad, but then you also kind of remember the really good as well, don't you? When you when someone's been gone the extra mile or when someone's done something really nice. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think that's, that's very important with events. Um, and so if you were to kind of do anything again, uh, if you, I mean, if you were to change anything, what would you change? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> that was easy, wasn't it? Simple answer, um, yeah. Uh, no, um, no, I'm not promoting it's an ideal situation to fail mm -hmm. your exams or anything like that because um, it's really not. But for me, my journey of having to do resits, having to face up to that, having to face my parents, having to face the possibility of not passing my degree um, and then having to really step up and pull myself together it's kind of all added to my like resilience toolkit which has kind of helped me later on in life mm -hmm. um like all my experiences both good and bad have kind of helped me to do the things that I'm doing now so for example I mean I was mentioning to you earlier Max that I'm, I'm writing a novel and mm -hmm. so I wouldn't be able to even contemplate something like that if I didn't have some content to draw upon so yeah, so I feel like my life in events has given me some really the best stories um, of things like breakfast on the beach with the orangutans in Malaysia to recording songs at Abbey Ridge Studios. Um, and it's all stuff that I can draw on and it will help me kind of with my creativity. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. Wow, that is, uh, that's quite the varied experience there. <laughs> Yeah, the ups and downs, that's for sure. Yeah, but I mean, uh, that's the thing with events and, and that's one of the major benefits, I guess, is that every day, every event is so different from the last. Like with, yeah. with some jobs and with some um, roles, you're kind of in an office or you're in a factory or you're in the same place day to day. You see the same people and you, you're kind of stuck in one environment. Whereas with events, you're kind of... All, you can potentially be all over the place doing yeah. a whole variety of things. You're thrown an, a complete array of problems your way that you just have to kind of take on the chin and deal with. with. Yeah. yeah. So, so I guess that's, that's one big advantage um, of, um, of events. And Connie says, uh, ha, do you enjoy working away from home? Yeah. So that's a great question. Um, because I would say that when I first started out in events, I really did. Um, I enjoyed the travel, you know, have the opportunity to visit the places that I've visited, stay in all the really beautiful hotels that I've stayed in and have the experiences that I've had without having to put my hands in my pockets to pay for it. Um, it's incredible really so yeah I absolutely loved working away from home during that time when I was what you call operational so when I was delivering the event um, then you know things change a little bit I got married I got I had babies and then it's not quite so appealing to be away from home constantly mm -hmm. um, but I kind of I sort of um, created a, a, a different niche for myself and I I well, in, in conjunction with my managers at the time. So I, I put myself into a different role, or should I say they put me into a different role. But then I started doing proposal writing, um, which meant that I was more home-based. So instead of delivering the events, I was responsible for putting the events and designing the events and putting them together for the clients to read and go, oh, that sounds great. Let's go with that. Um, and then other colleagues would be the ones going out and delivering the event. So how, so I know you said that the, um, your employer kind of put you in that change of role, but how, how did that kind of happen? Did you request that or did you kind of say like, oh, my circumstances have changed? Like, 
can I adapt my role or did it just kind of, were they just like, basically, this is what you need to do? How did that kind of transition occur? It was a little bit of lots of things. It wasn't a hard and fast situation. It sort of evolved. Um, I just stepped up and showed more kind of energy towards putting the solutions together. And I, sort of in my appraisals and things, I would sort of say, you know, oh, actually, I really enjoy doing this. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, actually, you're really good at it. You should be doing more of it. And I kind of, I guess my role sort of just organically changed um you know I was steering that very much so um because that was the direction I wanted to move in in light of the fact that I'd had children and I didn't want mm. to be away from home so much but yeah it was a bit of it was a bit of everything it was a bit of need from the business it was my need it was just a, a right, right place right time so it was mm. lots of things really Cool. Um, and then the last question that I've got for you, unless anyone else has any other questions, is um, what's the most important lesson that you've learned so far in your career? Yeah, so it's really, it's really hard, you know, to pinpoint just, just a lesson, but I will. I will rise to that challenge and give you just one <laughs> yeah. Um And I would say it is treat people how you want to be treated. Um, you should give everybody the same level of respect, whether you're talking to your client's boss or you're talking to the person mopping the floor in the conference venue. If you should always, always show kindness and compassion, always. Um, and hopefully, I don't need to kind of back that up with a why because mm -hmm. it should be it should be obvious to people as to as to, as to why that's necessary um i will just give you a quick story um mm -hmm. i i was at a wedding last year at a very fancy venue if, you, if anyone's heard of it called le manoir Saison, which is in oxfordshire and um it's owned by raymond blanc the chef and um, it was a very, 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 very intimate wedding. And we were, we were in the dining room and a guy called Barry Jones, who is the head chef there, came out after we'd eaten one of our courses just to say hello, say a few words, congratulate the bride and groom, what have you. And then just, just that before he left the room, I, I asked him a question and um, he told me, he told me a story about one of his opportunities, which was that in his previous, re uh, previous restaurant that he worked in, an apprentice, a young girl apprentice, started working in the kitchen. And he's so passionate about food, he took her under his wing and helped to guide her, taught, tried to teach her what he knew, he showed kindness, was always ask, answering questions that he said, you know, any question, any question you've got, just ask me. I'm happy to answer your question. And over the course of a few weeks, they built up a really nice relationship and she felt like she could go to him for anything. And then one day she said, um, hey, um, my uncle is looking for somebody to help with, um, he, needs a, he needs a private chef. So um, I kind of suggested that you might, you know, would you be interested? He was like, oh yeah, sure. So he went to the uncle's house to learn more about the garb and what it would entail and what have you. And it turns out that the uncle uh, was Richard Branson. Wow. And the job was to be his personal chef on Necker Island, what? which is his private island. And he got the job. And the reason he got the job was because of the way he had treated Richard Branson's niece. And you wouldn't even, he didn't know either. That's had no idea. Had absolutely no idea. Because she didn't have the same surname as him. Hmm. He had no idea. It was his attitude. It was his kindness. It was the way that he wanted to help her in her, in her versioning career as a, as a young chef. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what got him the job on Necker Island. So yeah, the lesson is treat people as you want to be treated. And it can open doors as well. And yeah, absolutely. And I'd, I'd even go one step further than that as well. And to say like, it's kind of related to that. It, like, don't be scared of someone because of their job title. Because like, I've, I've had that before, as, as I'm sure maybe you've experienced that too, where you think, oh, I, I can't speak to them or they're, they're too high up. They, they don't want to talk to me because they're like, I don't know, chief executive or whatever. Obviously, you know, don't go to them for your maths homework or whatever, but like, <laughs> don't, be, don't be afraid to have conversations because at the, at the end of the day, if you treat them with respect, the mm. likelihood is that they will treat you with respect as well. And you never know what, what's going to happen from those conversations. If you've got a question to ask and you want to, and you want to know, like, and you have that opportunity, don't you'll regret it if you if you don't take that opportunity and kind of treat that person with respect and and as you say with kindness and 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 just kind of ask a question don't be afraid absolutely because you know we're 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 all human aren't we and and actually what you do find is that often people are quite happy to Mm. share their experience to share their knowledge to impart that information um because actually people love talking about themselves do, yeah. yeah 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 so if, if, you know if you get if, if, if somebody asks then um often people are really happy uh to respond yeah definitely so um is there anything else that you want to mention that you've kind of not said so far um well not unless there are any questions from anybody but um hopefully i've with a few, you know, given the basic a basic overview there. Yeah, I mean, I I I certainly feel like you've given a a very good understanding of events, and and hopefully these guys um, agree. And by all means, if if you have any questions for Janina, then put them in the chat, and we will um, we'll address them because this is a this is a great opportunity to ask someone within the industry that you don't kind of get to speak to every day. Events people are very, very, very busy. They've always got things going on and projects and deadlines and everything like that. So really appreciate um, you talking to us as well, Janina. Thank you. Um, But yeah, so I I'll end the recording here and then we'll, we'll give it a couple of minutes in case anyone else has got any questions. So, um, so yeah, Thank you very much for watching Careers Talk Live. Hopefully you have enjoyed and that you've learned something. Um, Make sure that you tune in and sign up for the mailing list to find out a few days before each one what's coming up and who we'll be speaking to and what you can kind of learn about that. Make sure that you follow us on all of our socials on Trentbridge Community Trust and The Young Project, which will be in the description below. And I don't know, Janina, if you have anything that you want to plug social media wise or anything like that. I don't actually, um, other than just to say, you know, if you, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn, Janina Monaghan. Um, so if you, if you would like to reach out, ask any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah, lovely. So yeah, um, we will, um, we'll see you in the next one.